everybody, we're going to take a look at um, arc natural and artificial selection. So by the end of this, you should be able to differentiate between natural and artificial selection. I think uh, this cartoon right here kind of says it all. Um, so here's our aim. Let's get started. So natural selection selected the wild mustard seed. So if you look at the picture in the, in the middle, that's what a natural wild mustard seed or mustard plant looks like, okay? Um, if you look at all these other offshoots, cauliflower, broccoli, cabbage, kale, and kohlrabi, they all come from artificially selecting certain wild mustard seeds and then replanting them and letting them grow that eventually led to all these plants that we now eat. It's kind of amazing. So if you have a grew broccoli and, and kind of let it sprout, let it just go, it'll eventually have flowers and look much like the wild mustard seed. But um, we artificially selected them, humans picking certain offshoots of the wild mustard seed developed all these plants just from this one nature however, selected a wild mustard seed. Same thing with corn. Here's the picture on the left right here. That's what wild corn kind of looks like. I mean, our corn actually even looks better than that. And here are all the different variations of uh, peppers. There's probably more than that, that we artificially selected from the wild pepper. Then you have uh, artificial selection on steroids. So basically what we could do now, if you remember, a plasmid is the DNA in uh, prokaryotes. Remember, prokaryotes, it's circular DNA. So we're able to cut a piece off of um, that bacterial plasmid, put DNA inside of it, such as the insulin gene, have those prokaryotic cells reproduce in, in the lab, and then we can have them make the insulin for us. Um, these are called GMOs, genetically modified organisms. They come in all different shapes and sizes. Here's one example that is uh, beneficial to, to humans. And then I would make a, a joke about the Yankees right here and say, uh, because of human growth hormone, because um, we could do the same thing with them, it's beneficial to uh, uh, the Yankees, which is why they win so many World Series. But I'm a Met fan. I'm a little um, bitter. So if you're a Yankee fan, just deal with it. Enjoy your trophies and give me this moment, all right? Here's some other genetically modified crops. Flavor saver, sounds like a rapper, all right? Um, different things that we could do here is just another example of uh, how we can improve plant cells. Um, we have transgenetic sheep that contain the human gene. Um, we can put something in them that can create a, um, a life-saving clotting protein. So animals increase resistance, productivity, hardiness, feed efficiency, right? Most of our crops today have been artificially selected in one form or another, um, even before genetics. Our meats, our cows, our, our chickens, our pigs, all artificially selected before we had GMOs. Um, golden rice is used to save thousands of lives. Okay, so we could take rice, put vitamin A in it, which is a, a needed vitamin, essential for life, and then um, give these to underdeveloped nations who uh, rely on rice and give them a healthier diet. Um, we could also uh, genetically modify fish, which we see here. Um, I'm not a big fan of farm-fed salmon for a lot of reasons, but... Um, here's one of the ways they do it. They just take a regular salmon um, and they actually put some genes in it with an ocean pout. That's what an ocean pout looks like, right? They're implanted in salmon in an attempt to make them grow faster. And then uh, the promoter for an antifreeze protein gene is used in conjunction with the growth hormone taken from Chinook salmon. That's the gene. That's a Chinook salmon, better known as a king salmon. King salmon are on the uh, west coast. Here's another picture of a king salmon, right? And then we have that. 
here's the picture we started with. Here's something, believe it or not, right in the early 1900s, an American paleontologist, Dale Russell, he suggested that if dinosaurs survived, we would go uh, to a uh, humanoid would eventually develop, and that's what they would look like. All right, so have we reached our goal? Can we be able to differentiate between natural selection and artificial selection? Will you tell me? The wolf, naturally selected or artificially selected? Good, if you pick natural, you are correct. The dog, right? Same species right here, these two dogs, artificial or natural? Artificial, good. How about the cow? Artificial or natural? Artificial. The bison. Natural. The lion. Natural. How about this little cat here? Artificial or natural? I would say artificial. The pig? Artificial. How about the wild boar? It's an invader species but it's naturally selected. Um, how about the, uh, some, the beta or beta? This one is artificially selected. The males that we buy in the fish store. This is what males really look like. That's naturally selected. How about the rat? Again, an invader species in the United States, but it's naturally selected. How about this guy? Artificial, how about that guy? Artificial, GMO. This one, definitely artificial, GMO. A drill, right? Uh, growing a human ear on the back of a, a laboratory rat. How about humans? Are we artificially selected or naturally selected? Some say natural. Are you sure? I mean, it's kind of hard to say, right? You have some cultures that um, actually select your husband or your wife for you. Is that artificial select, selection or natural selection? Right? Um, I would say we are now becoming more naturally selected, but, you know, if it uh, came from generations of your parents picking you or spouse, then you could argue artificial selection. Remember the movie in this Husky's class, Gattaca? How about this guy and that guy? He was naturally selected very good, and he was artificially selected. How about these right here? These guys, artificial selection and natural selection? Yeah, they're just an internet hoax. All right, that's our lesson for today. So, um, Hopefully now you can differentiate between artificial selection and natural selection.